Well, hello. Uh, we're going to review together now the bones and the muscles of the lower limb. We're going to start with the bones. And uh, the biggest one, of course, we have is the femur. The femur has the proximal end that has the head and the neck and the distal end here that would have the medial and lateral condyles. If you want to orient your femur, then the head of the um, femur would be the proximal, at uh, the proximal end. It would be pointing medially, and you have a fairly large groove here. It's called intercondylar fossa, and that in the intercondylar fossa will be pointing backwards. So you can point the femur accordingly, and this one you are looking at here would be a left femur. Uh, let's start with the proximal structures. We are looking here at um, the head, the neck. Unlike um, the humerus where we had two necks, one of them is anatomical neck and the other is surgical neck, here we have only one single neck. In the head, we will have uh, a little depression here, as you can see. It's called fovea capitis, fovea capitis. Let's go back. We have again the head, the neck. The head, of course, would be articulating with the acetabulum on your um, hip bone. Here is the neck. Now we have two trochanters. You can more or less see them from the anterior aspect. You have the greater trochanter, and we have the lesser trochanter, right? In between them, we have intertrochanteric line. Intertrochanteric line. That's almost connecting the two of them. If I am to look at the posterior aspect from the posterior side, then once again here, we will have the greater trochanter, the lesser trochanter, but here it's not a line. We will call that intertrochanteric crest, as you can see, it's fairly elevated, intertrochanteric crest. Below that intertrochanteric crest, we will have a tuberosity here, that would be your gluteal tuberosity, and along the line down, uh, you will see that we have a semi-sharp line that will be your linea aspera, linea aspera. The linea aspera laterally will become continuation of the gluteal tuberosity, the gluteal tuberosity, and um, then it will divide when it comes, when it goes all the way distally into both lateral and medial condylar lines lateral and medial condylar lines. Obviously, these all are attachments for very important muscles, as we will learn later on. Once again, this is the linea aspera. We'll divide into medial and lateral supracondylar lines. Supracondylar lines. Okay, leaving us with some features here at the very distal end. From the anterior aspect, we will have um, um, medial and lateral epicondyles, medial and lateral epicondyles. We have the medial and lateral condyles themselves. And from the posterior aspect, we will see the intercondylar fossa, the intercondylar fossa. These are the structures on the femur. Uh, we can discuss uh, a little bit the, um, the attachments that you have on the femur. Um, some of the attachments I would like to mention to you. Uh, one of them would be here and at, at the anterior uh, part of the shaft of your femur. You will have the origin for an important muscle that is part of your quadriceps muscle it's called the vastus intermedius. Vastus intermedius will be attaching here. 
Bostas, letra, Bostas medialis will be originating on a line that is extending over here, whereas Bostas lateralis will be originating from a line that is from the opposite side. Bostas intermedius, however, is very uh, characteristic and is unique. We have some uh, insertions um, on the femur. Um, we have, especially here on the back, we will have um, um, the gluteus maximus would be at the gluteal tuberosity here. That's why the roughening is present. Uh, that, and then we have um, um, abductor, um, few of the abductors will be inserting themselves here as well. The abductor uh, longus will be right here. And if you remember, abductor brevis was underneath it. So abductor brevis will have an insertion here. And abductor magnus, on the other hand, it will take a very, very, very long insertion going all the way from um, the, uh, the uh, um, almost the, the gluteal tuberosity and extending down to the linea aspera and going even down to the medial supracondylar ridge. All that will be the insertion of your um, uh, abductor magnus all the way even to the abductor tubercle here that you can um, see at the very distal end of your femur. So these are interesting muscles that we need to remember when, when it comes to the origin and insertion. A uh, couple of uh, other small muscles here we have at, at the calf. Um, we will have um, the medial and the medial head and the lateral head for your gastrocnemius, the medial and lateral head, medial and lateral head of your gastrocnemius muscles. Uh, right above the medial head of your gas, I'm sorry, the lateral head of your gastrocnemius will be an origin for a small muscle here that sometimes is absent, is called plantaris muscle, plantaris muscle, all right? So that covers our femur, and we will move from that point into our tibia. The tibia is the weight-bearing bone of our leg, uh, the femur doesn't really bear the fibula, I apologize, the fibula doesn't uh, bear any weight. Uh, everything is on uh, the tibia instead. Uh, the tibia will have um, articulating surface uh, for each condyle, medial and lateral uh, surface for each condyle. So this will be articulating surface for the lateral condyle, for the medial condyle, and this would be articulating surface for the lateral condyle. In between the two articulating surfaces that you can see, there will be intercondylar eminence, intercondylar eminence elevations um, at the articulating surface here uh, that would fit into your intercondylar fossa, and we call that intercondylar eminence. On the anterior, on the anterior side, before we reach uh, the shin of the tibia, then you will see uh, a large tuberosity here that would be your tibial tuberosity, tibial tuberosity. Uh, we will have a facet here that is created by the head of your fibula, and so that is your uh, fibular facet. Uh, if we go then distally, that will be the shin of your tibia. Going all the way down, we will see the medial malleolus. We're looking here at the medial malleolus, and that part here articulates with your talus bone, of course, uh, to make your ankle joint. All right. Um, right here, of course, your fibula will make another joint. We have two joints between the tibia and the fibula. One of them is proximal, and the other one is distal tibial fibular joint, all right? Um, we have also interesting muscles and structures that attach to uh, your tibia, although I'm not going through 
extreme details in this review video that I'm making for you. But if we look at your medial um, side here, we will see a large area that gives uh, an, an origin here for your tibialis anterior muscle. The tibialis anterior muscle is originated here. Interestingly, this part here will give you an origin for tibialis posterior. Tibialis anterior would be here, and the tibialis posterior is originating at this point. Um, on the posterior aspect, we will have the flexor digitorum longus taking an origin all the way here along the shaft, of, along the posterior aspect of the shaft of your tibia. Um, that is what I wanted to share with you, uh, the tibia. We have, um, in addition, we have a couple of interesting and important muscles here to mention. Uh, one of them is your uh, biceps femoris. The biceps femoris, it has an insertion point um, over here on the, on, on, on um, not the side of the, not the side of the malleolus, but on the other side, on the lateral side. Remember that the biceps femoris is on the lateral side, so you will see the insertion point for your biceps femoris over here, okay? Okay, and then we will go from that into the uh, fibula. Let's review the fibula together. I remember to bring it. Um, here it is. So the head of the fibula, of course, will be uh, superior and or proximal, and then we have the lateral malleolus is all the way distally here. What we need to remember of your insertions, um, you will have your biceps femoris is inserting itself also near the head of your fibula. Uh, you will have the insertion of your biceps femoris around this point. Um, not really much to mention uh, on uh, the fibula. There are, of course, some other muscles that attach, but for this upcoming exam, I doubt that they would be interesting for you. Uh, we can mention two of them, however, because uh, we know them. This is the fibula. So we have the fibularis longus and the fibularis brevis. If you go at the malleolus and you go up, that will be the origin of your fibularis brevis and above that would be the origin of your fibularis longus muscles. All right, and from that, we will head into our, um, the bones of your uh, foot. Let's get me sitting here, and uh, we'll, we'll go into that. <coughs> 